Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be carrying on with my five Victorian novels about series and today I have five Victorian novels to talk to you about, all of which are about fallen women. So the idea of the fallen woman occupies a very big place in the Victorian imagination. A fallen woman is a woman who has had sex outside of marriage, thereby disgracing herself within Victorian morals and ideology. Now Victorian literature deals with a lot of fallen women in various Victorian novels. I'm going to stop doing air quotations now because it's going to get annoying, but any time I say the word fallen you can just like assume there are air quotations around it. Anyway, I have five Victorian novels to talk to you about today, all of which deal with female characters who, through various circumstances, end up in in a sexual relationship outside of marriage, leading in most of these books to unwanted pregnancy, though not always. And these books look at various characters and various situations and are all quite interesting. This is of course just a sample of five, there are a lot of other books that I could be talking about today. You know, I could talk about Oliver Twist, I could talk about Drama and Muslin, I could talk about Judy Obscure, I could talk about Dombey and Son. However, as per usual with these videos, this is just a little sample of five books that I think look at this theme really, really interestingly. And of course, as always, I would love your recommendations down in the comments below, because this is a thing that I find quite interesting in Victorian literature and a kind of Victorian obsession that is always quite interesting. Because of the particular theme I'm talking about, I will have quite a lot of like quarter of the way through spoilers in this video. Not like halfway through or end spoilers, but just like quarter of the way through if you want to go and blind to all books that you read, maybe don't watch this. But anyway. First I have Tess the Dovervilles by Thomas Hardy. This is a really interesting novel and a really powerful one. It is not my favourite Thomas Hardy, though I know it is a lot of other people's and it is one that I think is really important. We follow a young woman called Tess Derbyfield. She has grown up fairly poor and one day her father kind of discovers or thinks he may have discovered that they are related to a wealthy family called the Dovervilles. So Tess is kind of sent off to meet this family called the Dervervilles, where she meets a man called Alec Derberville, who does not behave very well towards Tess. There has been a lot of critical discussion and debate about whether or not Alec Derberville rapes Tess in this book or not. I don't know how clear I think that actually is, but it is certainly suggested that Tess does not understand what is happening enough to be able to consent. And Tess ends up very early on in the book, abandoned, pregnant, everything goes on from there and it is about how this incident in her past kind of shapes the rest of her life and affects how she views herself and also how other people view her. It looks a lot at double standards of morality, especially sexual morality, in the Victorian period and is really really interesting and it also looks a lot at class. Alex's kind of power over Tess at the beginning is not just to do with the fact that he is male and she is female but the fact that he is upper class and she is working class and I'll talk about this in a few other books here as well because it's quite interesting to note that in a lot, and I mean a lot, of the Victorian novels that look at fallen women Usually these are working class women who have been seduced by upper class men. Not always, but that is quite a common trend. That is the case in three out of the five books I'm talking about today, which is quite interesting. This is not a happy book at all. This is not a cheerful book. This is quite a miserable book, um, but it is fantastic and it is really interesting. And definitely one I would recommend if you're interested in looking at the way the Victorian literature deals with the idea of fallen women. It's also interesting to note as well that the subtitle of Tess is a pure woman. Um, and so the kind of point of Tess the Dervilles in many ways is to prove that while Tess may be like considered fallen by society, she is actually a better person than most of the Victorian society she lives in thinks she is. The next novel I want to talk about is Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is a wonderful novel and one that I really enjoy and a very interesting one because the setup and the start of it is very similar to Tess of the Dovervilles. Young, fairly unprotected working class woman gets seduced by an older upper class man who has no intention of staying with her or marrying her. However, I have often described Ruth as like Tess of the Dovervilles written by someone who had faith in the world and humanity. It is still a sad and difficult book but there is a lot more happiness in it than there is in Tess of the Dovervilles and it is about Ruth's kind of recovering her self-identity and recovering her sense of morality and religion after these incidences, knowing that the world will view her as sinful and knowing that she is not, um, and that through religion to a main extent but also through the kind of makeshift family she ends up being part of she does kind of come to terms with with who she is and what has happened in her life and she forgives herself for what she considers a sin and that is very very interesting and very worth a look at and Ruth is a really a really wonderful novel that I would highly recommend and while Tess the Durbervilles may seem on the surface more powerful and Ruth is a quieter novel, I think Ruth is also a very very powerful novel in its way and has a lot to say too 
and has a slightly more hopeful look at the world than Tess the Devils does. So Ruth is definitely another novel I would recommend if you're interested in the way that fallen women are looked at in Victorian literature. Another book that I think is of interest here is Adam Bede by George Eliot. George Eliot is not my favourite Victorian author by any means, as a lot of you will know, and Adam Bede is not one of my favourite books. However, it is very interesting, and I think it's very interesting as well to compare to Tess of the Durbervilles and Ruth here, because there is one particular character in this who ends up in a fairly similar situation. Again, that she is a working class girl, she is a dairy maid and she falls for the kind of wealthy son of the squire and of course many things go wrong and everything goes on from there. This, like Tess the Durbvilles, is a novel that has no hope in humanity but also unlike Tess the Durbvilles I think it's a novel which blames the woman much more which is quite interesting to look at. Personally I'm not a huge fan of Adam Bede as I said but I think if you're interested in how Victorian literature explores the idea of fallen women then Adam Bede is a book that you have to read because it is really really interesting and less forgiving a novel, I think, than Ruth or Tess of the Durbervilles. Hetty Sorrel's vanity is talked about a lot in this book, and certainly there is a lot less of an effort to suggest that Hetty is in any way pure than there is in, for example, Tess or Ruth. And it's also a novel in which it is suggested that the woman and the man who are having this affair outside of marriage are both consenting and both kind of want this as much. Whereas in Tess the Durbvilles and Ruth, both of these books are very much one in which a man with much more power seduces a woman, whereas I don't think in Adam Bede it is quite so clear-cut, although the kind of way that that is dealt with I find slightly more problematic. Definitely if you're interested in the topic, it is a book that I would recommend reading. The next book I would recommend is Esther Waters by George Moore. This is another interesting one and slightly different. Again, we have a young working class girl who is a servant at a big house, but rather than being seduced by an upper-class man, as tends to be the case in many of these Victorian novels, the man who she ends up with and who she ends up carrying the illegitimate child of is another servant who works with her, so not someone of the class above her at all, which is quite interesting and in some ways was probably actually more common in actual Victorian society. And in many ways I feel like Esther Waters is the most realistic of the novels I'm talking about today, though I don't necessarily think that means it is one of the best. Esther ends up alone and with a child to support and we follow her through her life and through her efforts to support her son, which I think is one of the most interesting things about Esther Waters, looking at how the fact that she has a child and isn't married has a huge effect on her trying to work as a servant. When people find it out, she is often dismissed from situations, she is considered immoral by people around her, but at the same time it's not considered uncommon, her situation, it's just considered a bit dodgy. And it's very interesting that when she leaves her position because she's got pregnant, one of the other servants says to her, oh well, you know, it could happen to anybody, because this amongst her class at that time in the late Victorian period was not that uncommon and is something that most of the people around her accept as an unlucky mistake rather than immorality. Although interestingly, Esther kind of is harder on herself than some of the people around her are. And it's also interesting in terms of her relationship with the father of her child throughout the book. The dynamic between them and the way he is presented is quite different to the way other characters occupying a similar role are presented in different books. So Esther Waters is definitely a book that I would recommend if you're interested in how this theme is looked at in Victorian literature. I find the ending slightly disappointing because I kind of wished Esther had behaved in a different way, but I also find it quite realistic, if you see what I mean. And finally, I want to talk about East Lynne by Ellen Wood. This is quite a different novel and deals with a character in quite a different situation because it deals with the fall of a married woman who is upper class. East Lynne looks really interestingly at the way particular women are treated, and I would say in some ways it is the most complicated situation, but also one of the most interesting of the books I'm talking about today. I really love East Lynne. I think it's a fantastic novel. But the way this book looks at Victorian ideas of morality and motherhood and sexuality and kind of relationships is just really, really interesting and the way it examines how people can be judged within society is very interesting. East Lynne is a really, really fantastic novel, one I would highly recommend, and especially if you're interested in looking at the way Victorian literature looks at so-called fallen women. So that is all I have for today. Those are five books I wanted to tell you about that I think look really interestingly at that Victorian idea of fallen women. Please do recommend me books down in the comments that you think look at this theme interestingly as well. Obviously I mentioned a few others that I think are interesting but I didn't want to talk about in depth here at the beginning of the video as well. And there are plenty more I'm sure that I haven't read yet. I hear that Armadale by Wilkie Collins is quite interesting in this light and I'm sure there are many more that I don't know of. So that is all I think for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.